Welcome to the annual DEF CON convention. This meeting was held in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada from July 9th through the 11th, 1999. This is videotape number 43. Text files, G files, and log files. Remembering the 1980s through ASCII. I guess I'll begin yeah. talking. You all know this is text files of the 1980s. <laughs> Should I talk with this, or? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Hey, everyone in the hallway, you're missing an incredible speech by a master of ceremonies. No, it's not going to work. OK. <laughs> Anyone want to figure out which of these makes this stop feedbacking? Either one. The other one. Try another one. Turn either one off the other mics. Yeah, now the mics. I'll tell you where to put it. 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 i there's two works. There was 1986 to 1988, when my dad found the big phone bill. And then <laughs> 1989 till about 1996, it was run by a kid named Dave Ferret, who uh, screwed the code up so bad. Um, and he ran, and that's when I think most people started to really learn about it. That's when it became a CDC board. And I was just kind of sysop emeritus. Um, before that, there was a golden period of about 1982 to about 1986, seven, where I was known as the slipped disc. And uh, I can see by the sea of faces, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was forefront in your lives. Um, anyway, so yeah, but right now, um, the main project I do besides my regular job is working on a site called textfiles.com, uh, which I hope some of you have browsed, or if not, um, basically what I've been working on is I'm trying to collect thousands and thousands of text files from the 1980s BBS scene um, and assemble them in a somewhat cohesive manner separated by somewhat arbitrary topics with descriptions that will cause you to want to get to them. And, um, it's going along pretty well and I said, what the heck, I'll go and speak at DEF CON about it, maybe I can get some more people who are interested in it. And so today I'll be talking um, uh, mostly a little bit about the site and a little bit of reminiscing and a little bit about you know why I really got into the whole business. Um, I'm one of these who is really anal, which you find out if you went to the site. And so I have my speech kind of out in front of me, so I'm one of these guys who's going to keep looking down. I'm sorry about that, but I'll you know, try to make eye contact as much as I can. So um, just, just to get an idea, um, to me there's a difference between having a computer and having a computer with a modem. It makes a big difference. So I just want to pull out a gear and go back down and just hold up your hand if you had a computer with a modem in that year, and we'll just go back, and I'm sure we're going to get some low numbers here. But anyway, about 1995, everyone who had a modem? Okay. Uh, 1994? Okay. Let's skip down. 1990? Okay. Uh, 1988? All right. More people came in 88. Um, 1985? Okay, now we're starting to, okay, 1982, all right, okay, and a couple people apparently were on 8 BBS, uh, 79, let's just, okay, there you go, okay. Well, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's a computer, but it's not, it's out of my scope, you know, like it's, in other words, um, for me what I'm talking about are like, you're a kid or a guy, you got a modem, you log in. Okay. It's actually everyone too. But yeah, I mean basically if you dial in. Because I mean what I'm dealing with here are dial ins. Well that's not entirely true. I and sometimes help you serve. I didn't pay for it. <laughs> I used to rant about that. Ten dollars a frigging hour and more if it was twelve hundred bought. Thank you. So I used to go on, I used to go download all of Moira's stuff, download all the encyclopedia. That was a real jerk. Anyway, so um, uh, basically, um, 
some people might wonder, or maybe some, why I got into textfiles.com. Um, basically what happened was, a while ago, uh, you know, I was kind of sitting around on my computer. I'm one of these guys who just kind of browses randomly for hours on end, and I, I, I suddenly wondered, you know, whatever happened to some of those old guys I was in, you know, used to know, and all the BBSs that I knew, and hey, I'll bet there's some really great site out there, and I can learn all about what happened and everything. So, you know, boot up AltaVista. Uh, stuck in Sherwood Forest 2, stuck in the history of K-Cool Dudes, stuck in uh, stuff about um, uh, Count Nibble, and uh, to my surprise, there was like nothing. There was just this dearth. Occasionally, there'd be a little frack magazine mention of somebody, but on the whole, it was like there was nothing. I was just astounded. There was absolutely nothing. So I went back to my dad's house, grabbed my old text file collection, and I started kind of building things up from there. And, um, you know, right now I'm sitting at about 18,000 text files are online. I've got 45,000 left to look at, and that's that I know of. There's actually a few people giving me CD-ROMs and 50 meg archives by mail, um, you know, basically for me to sort through. And so it's actually, I've, I've pretty much got my years set. I, I don't think uh, I'll be doing much else this year because it's really, you know, important to me. And actually, you know, well, well he's just saying hi. Hello, hello. Um, the, uh, well, you know, a lot of people might say, great, so you looked up Sherwood Forest 2 and you got nothing, why didn't you just go back to Slashdot and be done with it? And um, for me, there was actually uh, three main reasons why. Uh, number one, I'm really into subcultures. I think subcultures are really fascinating things, all the different people. You have the people who know what they're doing, the people who don't know what they're doing, the battles. Everything. And 1980s, um, especially, and, and even now into the 90s, there was this very special time that pretty much um, a vast majority of how this subculture communicated is digital and was saved. And if you know where to find it, if you get it from, you know, garage, I mean, there's kids now, people like me and stuff, you know, a stack of five and a quarter inch floppies. Um, in fact, actually, I brought one. Just in case, in case anyone has never seen one of these because they kind of phased them out. Look at it, it's flat and it's weird and it's floppy, it's a floppy disk. And note that I also have the second notch because I wanted it to be double sided. That was 143K a side on an Apple II. Actually more if you took out the... Hmm? No, I did not pay the $45 for the disk density increaser that they sold in the back where you go ka-chunk, great, that's, there's some guy in office supply who's living in, a uh, guy from the office supply business living in Aruba now. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, I just went back and grabbed all my old stuff and put it up, um, and, you know, a lot of people have that, and a lot of people do have this past, um, so that, that was one reason. Um, the other is uh, that um, I really like to read. I really like reading. I like just picking up lots of books and just reading them all. And for me, with the text files, I'm reading all this. Real, some of the stuff is really fascinating. I mean, yes, yeah, some of it's really badly spelled and boring. But even then, when it's a rant by some kid, he's 13, and he's talking about he's the master of the universe, and this other kid, he sucks. All he ever uses is a Commodore 64. He is a dork. I hate him. Don't pay attention to him. He's not elite. You can't, you know, you can't buy that kind of drama. So, you know, so, so actually, I actually do honestly enjoy this stuff. I'm not, this isn't a means to an end. It is the end for me. I mean, it's basically what I like. And the third one, which is actually the more emotional one, is that it is my childhood. I was born in 1970, and my father gave me my first computer. It was a Commodore PET, which I actually still own, rocking 8K of memory. Yeah cassette drive and the little five inch screen that's kind of not happy now. Triple E port. Hmm? Yeah, triple E port, yes, which I never got to use because I had no idea what the hell that thing was. <laughs> it was just the thing. But you could flip it up like a car and put a little like, car hood thing and the thing was flipped up and there's your board that you can't do anything because you're a you, you, you foolish kid. Um, and then we moved, we, we moved up to an IBM PC XT with a 2400 baud internal modem which dad took from work. Not bad for you two. It was good. I was Mr. Elite Boy. People forget the Baud Wars. People forget these people back when it was like, dude, we're 2400 only. Well, no, the thing, 2400 only. 
they weren't going to let the riffraff with the 300 baud acoustic modems on. They wanted it, you know, 2400. You wanted to get those couple dozen characters a little quicker, uh, especially good for wares. I, I think that, that continued up. I don't know if it actually made it up to 28A, but it definitely made it up to 19.2 that, uh, that you had 19.2 only trading boards. Um, I think after that, pretty much everyone had it, so it really wasn't that elite. You raising your hand for something? No. It, it, it did happen for a while. Good. Um, I, I like being corrected because I'm, I'm being a historian, and if I sit there and go, yeah, it was this, if I read it out of Stephen Levy's Hackers or something, and it's just kind of sitting in my mind, and it's complete crap, I want to know, um, that's very important to me, because when I, if, I'm, if I'm speaking from a position of authority on that file, I don't want people who weren't there to look at it and think that's the way things were if I'm doing it wrong. I really don't like, I like being corrected. So correct me if you go, no, that's not the way it was. I've actually had several screaming phone calls that way. But um, yeah, from about 82, I was running a PCXT. Hey there. I missed that, but I do know what you're talking about. Like, I, I mean, I, I did see it mentioned on things. Hmm? Oh. 16.8 HST, that was the question. That was a 16.8 HST. Yeah, is that the thing? That's the funny part. You have all these people who are arguing because they have the most badass transport protocol on their system. And you, forget you. You would... Mm -hmm. So... Hmm? Oh, I, well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I don't know. But I mean, I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I call the mind of history there is that um, people, when, when people speak from, basically from a position of authority and they're speaking about this is the way it was, especially in a published medium, I don't like the idea of someone being turned off, they read five, six files, and they're like, no, you know, they read my descriptions, like, this guy has no clue. Now I like to track people down. A lot of people from that time have come to me, and I've said, is this how it was? And I'm just an interviewing guy, um, hopefully asking them questions that most of them really didn't expect to be asked, which is kind of nice. Uh, most of them are like, oh, that's the old stuff. Um, so just to, um, just to clarify, um, when you say text file, especially the people who were born in, you know, 85 and so on, who, like, are here now. Um, you say text file, they're like, yeah, great, what? What's a text file? Who cares? It's not a binary file. That's great. Um, so I just want to define what a text file was as I see it. Um, the way I see it, um, when BBSs were around, you had BBS messages on some that other people saw. And you files you could upload and download binary and text files and some people had facts um, granted many of them illegal but you know they had facts or stories or something that they thought was more important than the board they were on particularly and they had something they wanted to pass on way down in the Apple subboard somewhere it was some file some some hack some story some some exploit that would uh, basically you know had to get out there. So they would write it as a text file, put it up into the file section, and people would download it. And so when I say a text file, I'm talking about, and, and so you get into the classic text file, which I want to mention. A lot of people call me old school, and I don't particularly like the term because people seem to use it for everything that they weren't a part of. And I'll go on, you know, I'm, I'm browsing a lot of sites, and people go, dude, I remember old school, 92. <laughs> back when it was just us and the VGA cards. And, you know, and they're, they're being honest. I mean, you know, it's seven years ago. Of course it's, it's old school to them. Um, somebody suggested classic. So I don't know, I'll, maybe I'll use classic from now on and say that's a classic hacker. Um, but once again, then you get guys from the 60s calling me an embryo, and that's about that. But the, uh, you know, for me, the classic text file, I don't have any slides, but if you can imagine, um, basically, if you had a text file, the classic G file, and G file, as far as I can determine, comes from Apple software that had general files where you could download, you know, and they would stick all their text files into the general file section, and everyone started calling them G files, and into T files, and then people started adding Zs at the end, and it all went to hell. But 
the, for, the, for the text, for the standard text file, you know, you download it off the DEF CON BBS, you know, it's 64, it's a 64K Apple. I actually have a BBS ad where the guy proudly claims he's got an Apple II, 48 got the 80 column card in. He's got two Apple II discs with Maxell diskettes. This is part of his system features, is I'm using Maxell diskettes in the disk drive. Anyway, so you're on the DEF CON BBS, and of course you just want to get on, so of course you're constantly breaking into chat, and Dark Tangent gets up from watching war games and lets you on. And <laughs> you, you, you go right to the file section, screw the BBS section, it's just going to be more kids. So you go right to the file section, you get this big, you download one, how, how to hack DEF CON. And it's got a big square at the top. It's got this big text graphic square made of equal signs and dashes. Later, you know, you get ampersands and, and stars and stuff. And it says, how to do it by Nightwing, or, you know, one of these incredible names that kids used to come up with. You know, the, you know just the mad phone man, Skate the Skinhead, uh, Black Agent 003 of the Knights of Fargo 4A. I heard the reason that he co they were called that, and this may be crap, but this is one of those stories that kind of goes up, I'd love to be corrected. Supposedly the Fargo 4A group were a group of phone freaks who one day connected to Fargo's main center for their directory assistance operators on Alliance Teleconference, which I'm sure they didn't pay for, and using a bunch of keyboards, so just like talking on the phone like this and saying, look, we're over at this office and we're doing this and we want to, you know, it's very important. And just social engineering these people, they convinced them that it was a test day and that, oh, the other center will be taking over for the day. So we wish for you to go home so that you'll, um, you know, because we have to do some testing on your equipment. And they did it. And they, supposedly that's what it was. They were blown away, they got them all to leave for like a few hours, and there was no directory assistance in Fargo because they were all gone home. Anyway, that's more about Bioc later. But, so yeah, you have the big old huge, um, big old huge square with the text graphics, and then right underneath it, the disclaimer. And you have the classic disclaimer, just, you know, the author will not take any responsibility, informational purposes, that's a little bit big for these kids. The author will not, the author will take no responsibility for this file. It was like boilerplate, you know. The, now, I don't know of any cases where that ever came into play. I mean, maybe I missed one. Oh, do you know of one? Uh, the method found in one of the earlier practices caused a bit of a stir. And But I'm not sure that was... But I mean, but what I'm saying is, yeah? Um, that's Anarchy for fun and profit. That's it, yes. And uh, except he, his disclaimer said that uh, he actually took responsibility for everything that was done by the Right. Well, he never got in trouble. He's very sad about it, actually. We had a very, very, he and, he and I are very old friends. He was a sysop on the works. And he's actually rather ashamed of that file. And he really doesn't want it to get out. And so it's really been a big issue for me because I really don't want to be the role of censor. I hate that. I hate going onto a place and it's like, here's, here's a file, but we're showing it for you for historical purposes, but we can't show you what's in it because it's, too, you know, you won't be able to handle the ingredient list, you know? And I, I just, I hate being that. It's just not the role I like. So in terms of that one, I do know that Death Veggie personally never got any problems, but that a lot of other people were problematic, including a Hartford BBS operator who went to jail for a short period of time because of an overzealous Hartford prosecutor who said, Ugh, and dragged him on over that text file. And Death Veggie called him in jail and said, I'm really sorry. Because by that time, our BBS, the works BBS, had deleted the file. We deleted it long before because he looked at it and said, this is stupid. What a stupid file to have up. So he got rid of it and I didn't even know about that. You, you had a question, sir? Oh, are you saying? Uh, what about the frac archives? I have all the fracs uh, that I know of. Oh, the frac text file and log archive. Um, are you speaking of the Phoenix project? Uh, yeah, the LOD. Yes. The LOD Phoenix project. Yeah. Um, well, I have currently the three 200 200k text files. The 200K um, log file examples that they did. Um, I ran into Mr. Bloodaxe yesterday and had a nice chat with him. And he said, Wow, you're doing really good work. Do you want all of them? And I said, 
yes, I would like all of them. So hopefully he'll give them to me um, because he said they, you know, it's been long enough. The product is dead. Let's let's just you know give it out. And so yeah, that I mean, um, believe it or not, I get really excited about stuff like that. I'm I'm really like an archaeologist. Um, like um, um, recently, about two months ago, I was kind of wandering around in some place called the Chaven BBS, Chaven.com. In their FTP section, they had Apple Docs. They had a lot, and I couldn't get them down. There was like some weird thing. I talked to the guy uh, who was on one of their little muds they had, and he said, oh, hey, let me give them to you. And so he uploaded them. And I had about 20 soft docs. These, um, just to mention, soft docs are basically text files that were transcriptions of manuals. So when you pirated something, you also included the soft docs, so you know you press control E to make the troll fire. And, um, and suddenly I went from 20 to having 700 like cat fur docs and the AE docs and everything and I was excited it was two in the morning I'm supposed to go home I'm gonna go to work the next day I'm like no I'm gonna stay here I'm gonna stay up all night totally screw up my schedule I'm gonna go and make all these text files go up and I had forgotten that's a lot of what it was for me back in the 80s a lot of it was like oh, I'm on the South Pole they have so much bomb shit I'm gonna take it all and I didn't you know it wasn't even to read or trade it was just I'm gonna get all the files um, <laughs> so, yeah, well, anyway, after this claimer, and then you had the stuff. Usually at the bottom, there were six billion greets. I just wanted to mention that as well. Greets out to this, call this BBS, they rock, they've got the stuff. That actually goes on now, actually, quite a bit. That, that standard thing. But when I say text file, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about source code or stuff. Although, now I do ask for BBS messages and log files and things like that for historical purposes. So, unfortunately, textfiles.com has really expanded in its um, mission to the point now that, I mean, I'm going to probably need a staff. What's up? Oh, sure. We're all friends here. We're giving away the t-shirt. Or anyone wants to enter into the raffle for the shirt? Now the time. The shirt? Yeah, uh, that black pearl shirt. Black pearl. Oh. Sorry to your speech. No, it's okay. It's, it weeds out the unfaithful ones. <laughs> I, can, I can see who'll sell me out for the shirt. Yeah, man, I'll buy the tape. It'll be okay. So, yeah. I Oh, man. So, um... Okay, historically, historically, let's, let's see if you go with my theory. My theory is I was trying to find the original text file. What's the original text file? Wait, you have an idea? My theory? This book is called Steal This Book. It was written by a gentleman named Abby Hoffman, who also went by the name Barry Freed when he was running from the government for several years before he let himself in. The book is basically a call to smash the state. It's basically a, um, a list of ways to rip off the system, rip off the bell, rip off uh, telephones, rip off um, supermarkets, get printed for free, go out and do stuff. And the thing with Abby was Abby was a really funny guy. This was a Chicago 7 dude who brought that pig in and he was, you know, he, he always, he, he, um, he mentions in the book that, you know, there are people who know, people who know theater without politics or politics without theater are doomed in both. And that shows in a lot of his stuff. He has this real, um, um, just a really light attitude about the whole thing. Hey, we're going to smash the system, yay. And um, like I said, you know, a lot of people they think Abby makes some cringe and horror and stuff. But interestingly enough, Abby was part of a, um, a small part of a, a little zine called the Youth International Party Line, which was a um, newsletter of the Yippies, the Youth International Party. And it was basically very political, but it also had a lot of things on how to rip off the phone company. A uh, big thing back then was the war tax that the phone company was actually taking an extra little tax to pay for, um, I think it was the Vietnam War, it might have been a different war, maybe Vietnam, and then it landed and it didn't go away. And everyone was like, ah, we will get free phone service because of this. And um, you actually see a lot of that, you know, you see that stuff with like touch tone, you know, and they still charge for touch tone, even though it's cost them less to have touch tone. Um, huh? Right, they charge for stuff that, it helps them. So, but anyway, so this youth international party line about 
um, a lot of the stuff was basically these text files on it about how to do different things. The phone code every year. Hey, let's get the phone code out. And um, yes. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. One other piece of business. If anyone is interested in working for the NSA, several people have asked, several people are afraid to give out their information, please come see me at some point during the convention, I will make sure you are taken care of. The best part about working for the NSA is you just think you want to, and they'll come to you. <laughs> I think I'd like, oh, they're here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, here's my resume. We get it, we know. Um, Anyway, so he went from Yipple and um, Al Bell, who was his co-editor, said, you know, let's really go for the technical side. And Abby was like, no, let's go with the political side. So Al Bell broke off and started TAP, the Technological Assistance Program. And some people are open. Like, have you heard of TAP? Was there a TAP, a general? Okay. Really? Is that it? You haven't heard of TAP? Huh. Um, there's a guy named The Fixer, freaking.iscool.net. Um, and he has digitized all the issues of Yipple and Tab and put them on a CD-ROM for like 10 bucks with like 500 text files, no, actually, a couple, actually about a thousand text files on it. Really nice deal. Um, I, I tried to get him to come and he wouldn't come, but um, it's a really fascinating, fascinating um, magazine. Um, it really had a really good sense of humor that was kind of duplicated in 2600. To me, See, 2600 are, were those young, snotty upstarts that were trying to push off TAP. And TAP had a little problem with a fire. And um, the editor at the time, I think it was Tom Edison at the time, and then it was Cheshire Catalyst, um, basically said, OK, I think we're done here. My apartment got burned down. And so you know, for me, I'm claiming Mr. Hoffman is the father of the text file. Um, we'll, we'll see if that holds up over time. Um, so, um, I don't know why, when I was a kid, I really wanted text files only. I think the reason why was because I had a PC and a lot of the boards were Apple, so I didn't have any use for these wares. I didn't have any use for the Commodore boards. I was one of these kids who'd get the BBS list and just go down it sequentially. You know, oh, this board, it's a police board. They're talking about something. Okay, I'm on. You know, this board is Unix. This board is, is some Commodore board. I don't care. I'll just go down them all. I love them. Yep? I got a question. Uh, are you posting, are you having posting files during the records that's like a C64 files with those records on the The closest I have, that's, that's, yeah, you're starting to get to these basic, basic architectural problems I've been running into. Um, right now, all of my files are ASCII, except I have a lot of IBM files with that idiotic second 128 characters with the little lines and the little stuff that they did incredible stuff with, but oh, uh, screw everyone else. And um, I have ANSI files, because I had ANSI files. You don't have any C64 files? But I don't have any C64 files. I don't have, I don't have any ANSI music. I don't have any, I don't have any of those. And I, you know, I feel, I really feel like it's outside my area. I am so close, but I'm... What about the a Tasky? I haven't had to think about that forever. That's the one that had Bob in it, didn't it? That was the ST? Yeah, which I don't have. Like, again, I start to feel after a while like the record store with the computer software, and you got the kid with the six piercings, he's like, yeah, I guess it's compatible. You know? I, after a while, I'm like, I can't look at it even, you know? I can look at ANSI, and I can look at the IBM graphics, I can't look at the other stuff, I don't have anything there. I'm sure eventually we'll have the textfiles.com testing lab. What? If it's been transferred to ASCII, I got my hands on it. Because I get a lot of my stuff from outside. So if somebody took it and took the time to do that, like the Apple Docs, this guy had it on a Unix box. So he took them from a whole ton of Apple disks. He did that conversion work. And I was benefiting off that conversion work and thanking him for it. So, you know, that's, that's about as close as I get. Um, but um, yeah, so basically, as far as I can tell, I was just taking text files because it was the one thing I could take. And after a while, I just really started digging them. And I had like files and files. And interestingly enough, back when I was 13, every one I put them on was called The Works. It was a The Works, this kind of text file. The Works, this kind of text file. Because I always wanted to run a board called The Works. And um, it was actually only three or four, later, three or four years later that I actually ran one. Um, 
So um, just to mention what some of those BBSs were, I'm just going to grab three, because I mean, I, I call hundreds and hundreds. Some of them just sank into obscurity after seconds after I went on them. Some of them, you know, I was on for years and years and I absolutely loved. Um, um, first BBS, you never forget the first BBS you were co-sysop on, when the guy gave you co-sysop access and you were helping to run the show. And for me, it was a place called The Restaurant at the End of the Universe, very original name. And it was run by a gentleman named Mr. I.O who one day named the place to Outland and renamed himself The Outland. And he was a member of a textile writing group called the Neon Knights slash Metal Communications, who were a group of metalheads. And I was at his house once, he was in New Jersey, and I was at his house once and the Blade and the Battalion came over. And his kids and, you know, I grew up in uh, Westchester, New York, which is not exactly the hood, and so, I never saw much of anything. I was like this quiet little kid working the thing. And these two kids come in. Blade, Blade was a little short, but the Metallion was just this big guy, jean jacket, smoking section, just super Supreme Metallica shirt. And they were just like, talking to, to this, you know, talking to the Outland, who was a clean cut punk. He was a very tall guy. And I'm like, kind of worried. I mean, these guys are huge. And they looked over, dude, the computer's free. And they run over. And they're typing away, oh, we're dissing this guy and stuff. And I was just blown away. I had this, that was when I first really started to learn that there were a lot of different people. You see that here. Unbelievable groups of people around. Um, but basically, the Outland, who was this clean-cut kid, would write some of the most heinous files. I think one of his more famous ones was How to Kill Santa Claus Dead. <laughs> Followed by its sequel, How to Kill the Easter Bunny Dead. His how to dead files were very popular. Um, in other words, you know, basically it was you know, get a fat seeking missile and blow the fat fuck out of the sky. You know, when he comes down, cut off his reindeer's legs, they won't be able to fly. And I was like, ah, I think it better be. He's this quiet guy. I think that's where he lived. His, his, um, because his room had nothing in it. It was just like a bed and desk. He was a very, very quiet state. But when he got on that computer, he was a different guy. Um, one day he just took the BBS down. I called him up, dude, B BBS is down. He's like, yeah. And I was like, why? And he was like, it's doing really well. So I took it down, because why not go out at the top? <laughs> very nihilist, very nihilist kid. He actually wrote one other file called Random Senseless Violence. Actually, no, it was, it was a derivative of Random Senseless Violence, because a bunch of people wrote Random Senseless Violence. That was a very popular title. Um, all I re what I remember, you know, you try to remember those ones you really, really stuck in your mind was one of his suggestions, one of his helpful suggestions was go to somebody's house and ring on the doorbell and tell them you need to make a phone call. Um, or you need to borrow something. And they'll bring you into the living room. And when they go to get the thing you asked to borrow, whip out your golf clubs and smash everything. <laughs> was full of stuff like, great, thanks. I'm going to use that tomorrow. <laughs> that was great. So that was the restaurant at the end of the universe. Um, neon Knights were like the small elite eight guys, and Metal Communications was anybody who would write to the Neon Knights and ask to put up a file, and they didn't like him. And they said, fine, we'll just put your file out as Metal Communications. A lot of death, a lot of Slayer lyrics, a lot of stuff like that. Um, there was a little board I called in Chicago called the Utopia BBS, which was basically this Apple board. But I mention it because it was written in BASIC at the time. Um, and so a big, kind of an interesting thing that's gone away is the whole mods scene. Not mod, not the IBM music files, but mods. Mods was how weird can we hack the code and still have you sort of be able to function on it as a BBS? How many spinning cursors, how many thing of the days, how many bizarre title screens, trivia, online tennis, can we stick into this thing in basic? And, uh, and every time you called the Utopia BBS, I mean, I called it about once every three or four days during the peak. Every time I called, it was completely different. <laughs> I'd log in and it would just go, hi, you're walking down the street and boom, there's an explosion and Santa Claus falls on your head. And so, yeah, so type in your password. And I type in my password and go, no, nah, not yet. Here's a little more. And it would tell you a bit more. And I go, hey, the message in the base is this. And the best part, I think, was at the, one of them, one of them, I have that log actually. You know, when you log into a BBS, you gave it your info, your name, your phone number, your blah, 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 for whatever, if you wanted to. And at the end, they had, call this BBS, call this BBS, call the slip disk, my phone number. 
Because <laughs> it would just feed you back your phone number out of the file. Scared the crap out of me. It was two in the morning. Um, and they were around for a long time. They were actually part of a scene of Chicago BBSs. And a lot of people think that I'm from Chicago because I talk about them so much. There was the Glue Ball, there was the Greek Inn, there was Utopia, and there was the South Pole! And the South Pole was the most violent place you could imagine. They had one purpose in life. How many bomb files can we make? Fascinating. That was their thing. Self-defense, self-reliance on an Apple II. And, uh, yeah, so, so, you know, there was... Oh, hmm? Ripco. Ripco. Never got on the Ripco, believe it or not. I really wanted to, but I never got on the Ripco. Hmm? I, I used to run the Ripco. Oh, the Ripco. Yeah. Yeah, go on. I, I tried to go to Ripco.com and, and cause, and, you know, hey, download. Same thing with Mindvox. Boy, there was a, there's Atlantis for you. If anyone doesn't remember Mindvox, it's gone. I mean, it was just, you know, it rose up. Patrick Krupa said, hey, you know, I'm from Legion of Doom. We're going to build this beautiful thing. It's Pantheon to the old times. We're going to bring it back. And it went up, and they had financial problems, and they went away. And if you go to that, their site, it's like blank. Sorry. Nothing here. Go away. Very, very sad. Um, but they're going to give me stuff, so I like them. Um, but one of the best parts about running text files is getting letters from people who were there. And they look for their own handles, and they find them on my, on my site what I wanted to do in the first place. And they go, oh! And there was one guy, I thank you so much for what you've done, for I was Barney Badass. <laughs> creator of the B files. He created a file where he complained about the female companions to Doctor Who. It was called Tits on the TARDIS. <laughs> I have that file and I have his other one, How to Run a Bitch War. <laughs> Flame War, but he called it a bitch war, because it was a B file. So it was Barney Badass's Bitch War B file. <laughs> and um, he went on, I found out, somebody mentioned a story to me that he went on to join a punk band that only had one release in Germany, and then they used that song for a Minute Maid commercial, and they got a whole bunch of money, and they just retired, and that was the end of that. And now he works for a record company in, in Chicago, and he's a happy guy. So I was like, wow. You see, that's, that's what's missing for me, I guess. Um, you know, even though everything, a lot of the stuff is, I mean, not illegal, but a lot of the stuff is, involves illegal acts or stuff, somehow you still want the curtain call. You still want to, you like, I was by occasion 003, thank you. You know, and you're, well, that was the guy. That's great. You know, and you want to do that. I even here, you know, you're like, oh, I heard all about Kevin Paulson. And there's Kevin Paulson. It was the, you know, he, he's there. Hello. Hi. That's great. You're a great guy. <laughs> that's great, yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's great stuff, you know. And, and unfortunately, that's not always realistic. That's not a very realistic thing. You know, some of these people just drop out, drop out. Um, um, I'm thinking of, for instance, Krakowicz who was one of my favorite guys. He was this Apple II uh, game cracker. He basically cracked idea, um, Apple games so that you went from being able to, he couldn't copy it to, it's a file, thanks. But he wrote text files. He wrote text files about everything he was doing. It wasn't just, yo, we're the Apple Mafia, screw you, we made it, it's ours, we rock. He said, yeah, I did it, here's how I did it. And he did things like build cards for the Apple II and break into the program and rewrite the, 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 uh, the contents. And he told you everything he did and he wrote it neat and he would just send it out. And that's a great kind of guy in any place, you know, because a lot of people, they just go, yeah, I got talent, you know. I think Dildog is very similar to that, actually. He's like, you know, hey, yeah, I did it. It was great. Here, here's how I did it. Thanks. I'll be off here doing another magic. Um, that's nice. I really like that. And, um, so, um, you know, oh, the third place. <laughs> okay, I, I actually want to show your hands this one. Who remembers Sherwood Forest 2? Yeah. Okay, four or three people. Oh, man. Wow. Okay, I do have a use in life. Okay, Sherwood Forest 2 was an Apple BBS. It was obviously it was Sherwood Forest 1. I never went on to that one. That was in New York City. Sherwood Forest 2 was in 914. And because, um, you know, you were, you were part of the posse by your area code. You were the 914, you were the 212, you were the guy. Um, Sherwood Forest 2 was basically a freak board, but that's where a lot of, you saw a lot of the names I started seeing in the 90s in these hacker books, you know, like uh, the Legion of Doom and, um, you know, Lex Luthor. We're doing this in 40 columns. You had an option when you posted messages, you put them in a square. 
put a square around your message. That way people would have to see it. And um, I, have, I have some logs from that. They're just great. They're just these things. I need karateka. That's it. I need karateka. Send me mail. Hey, I want to pass on a karateka story because I know the guy who made karateka, Jordan Mechner, who's actually, his, his brother went to my school. Supposedly, again, hasn't been proved to me, but supposedly Jordan Mechner programmed karateka so that that idiotic mountain in the background, when they going back and forth, you know the image in your mind's okay, a guy's going like this, going in the thing, and the back is the mountain. Well, supposedly, it had a little random number generator, and one out of 100,000 times, the mountain would explode. It would actually run lava and go boom. Why did he do this? So a kid would be playing it, and it would go boom. And he'd call his friends, guys, it blows up, it blows up, watch it. It would never happen again. <laughs> he could never prove it. He'd go to his grave and play karateka, and it would never happen again. So, <laughs> so th th I, can't, I can't verify that story exactly. Jordan Mechner's actually gone on to do some really neat stuff. Prince of Persia and Murder on the Orient Express, which tanks but really rocks. Um, hey, good guy. Um, his brother was the model for Karataka and Prince of Persia. He took 8mm film and would follow him in a car while he ran. And they just traced it pixel by pixel on his parents' projection TV. Um, <laughs> wacky. The, the, uh, so anyway, Shared Forest 2 was basically this big freak hangout. And it had Bayak Agent 003, who like I said, I'm... Bayak Agent is probably one of my top five guys I would just love to meet just to go thank you because most of what he did, most of the stuff was these 40 column uppercase lies um, at the time. You know, a lot of it was. A lot of it was like made up. A lot of it was like, well, first you got to get the code to Cosmos. Thanks. Um, and he was the guy who said, who wrote 80 column, properly spelled um, um, the basic the, the basic telecommunication series, one through eight, one through seven. One through, one through, one through seven, it was supposed to be an eight, nine, ten, never came out. And there were just these well-written, here's everything about payphones. Here's how they work, here's what it's about. Starting everywhere from like how the operators do things to how it works to what it does. And he just data dumped and it was really nice. And he wrote a bunch of files. He actually transcribed Yipl number one. He wanted people to know about Yipl. And he transcribed number one, I have it online. Um, and he, uh, you know, he wrote a bunch of stuff. I asked him his age, because I'm an inquisitive little jerk. And he was 17 when I was 14, so I'm 28 now. So he's probably about 31 somewhere, doing something. Um, and uh, I've never seen him online. I haven't seen any reference to him. I think I've almost tracked down Krakowitz. I tracked down Count Nibble, who was a really talented guy, um, who wrote the Count Lager series. He wrote. Fun with Coca, no, uh, uh, um, fun with, he wrote, fa he was the guy who wrote Fun with Random Senseless Violence, Mr. Shim, your briefcase opening pal, um, and a bunch of other stuff like that. His trick, because he wrote incredible stuff, turns out the guy was in college, whenever, when everyone else was like in, tw you know, they were all 12 and 13, he was in college, and he was bored as crap, and he was just writing these incredible things and these discographies and everything. So now he's like in his late 30s, and he's bitter. You can't really talk to him about much about anything. I try to talk to him, he never returns my, my messages. But he did take my text files and did refer to me as a link that says, if you're into this kind of stuff. I'm like, well, thank you. Um, Anyway, so Shared Force 2 had level 1, level 2, and level 3 access. Level 1 was like, you're just there, you can't really post. Level 2 was your regular use. Level 3 was elite. Level 3 was really elite, and you had a choice. You know, either you were given level 3 access or you could buy it. I bought it. It was 10 bucks. I was told, again, I was told by someone who knew them that I was the only guy who bought it. So he like called up the guy, what do I do with this? Some idiot said that then, but they gave me access because I really wanted the text files. There were always upper level text files they want. Bye, 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 bye. So I took all them home. Um, when it went down, it wasn't by its choice. <laughs> Somebody came in and said, you're done. Um, it was actually rumored to be a sting board by the end. That was a big thing. Sting boards, they were boards run by the, the cops and they're going to bust you and ask you for wares and stuff. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, but it, while I was preparing this speech, I looked up and I said, 914-359-1517. Because you dial it so many times. Yeah, it's 14 years later. I'm like calling the number right out of my butt. 
you know, it's really amazing how the, how the brain works that way. You just, boom! You know, because you just remember the name so much. Um, uh, oh, and the third one, uh, Dark Side of the Moon. Now, Dark Side of the Moon um, was uh, trying to describe to people what the, 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 the pull of the Dark Side of the Moon was. It's very hard. The humor was very hard to, to explain to people. But when you went there, the little opening string just said, Dark Side of the Moon, home of peace, love, and strudel. Their phone number is 48245 SPAM. And this was like in 84. And uh, you, they, had, um, they were an AE line. They were an ASCII Express line. Um, Apple Express was basically this, ASCII Express was basically this Apple terminal program that had a little file transfer thing to it, which of course automatically got turned into Piracy Central. People just transferring everything back and forth. It was very simplistic. And in fact, there were bugs. There were bugs and there were backdoors and there were problems. And on the, on the dark side of the moon, all these problems were gone. It turned out they had rewritten the whole thing from scratch to look exactly like it did, except when you hit the space bar, it was a zippy quote, and you could like transfer and all these other things. They, they'd done all this work, and it was very transparent. And um, one day, they and people would send messages to each other on this file transfer thing by naming the file this massive ass message. Where the hell happened to the latest Tristan Farnan stuff? You know, where the heck is this going on? I can't believe this file is still here. This is crusty. Um, and uh, one day they announced they're going to be a BBS. And I thought, oh my god, they're going to destroy this beautiful thing, because I really love log logging on that place late at night. BBS turned out to rule. Um, it was written called Waffle Software, and it was written by the SysOp. Um, and um, a lot of people now know the SysOp of, of uh, Dark Side of the Moon. I think he doesn't make it too much of a secret that he's now the proprietor of Rotten.com. <laughs> Very, very interesting fellow. Um, great guy. Unbelievably great guy. And the BBS ruled. I remember being on the, on, on the computer with him, and I was like, you don't have this, uh, you only have like two kinds of editors on it. And I was like, you don't have this editor. You should add it in someday. And he said, wait. And he went pound, pound, pound in front of me, and now the editor was one of the editors you could choose. He built it modular. He built this whole thing up. He ported it to, to Unix. I still run it. Um, and um, they were the home of a place called Anarchy Incorporated, which was very um, basically a place that just they wrote as many text files as they could, just hundreds and hundreds of these crazy text files about going on, uh, <laughs> how to rip off Kmart. Um, <laughs> roofing, roofing, <laughs> going on the roof, how to do it. Um, how, to make, how to make bugs break dance, I think was one of them, by Daredevil. <laughs> It involved really hurting the bugs, by the way. <laughs> they really had to hurt the bug. The bug didn't want to break dance. It wasn't in, it wasn't in the, the genetic programming. Basically, it took its legs off and spun it. Um, <laughs> but they were always, you know, that's the thing. A lot of these text file writing groups, they were always writing really, really cool things just out of their heads, just spouting. And um, you see that a lot in groups like uh, CDC. Um, you know, CDC was a text file writing group for years and years. They're becoming known more as an applications development house. Se security consulting firm. But originally, they were text file writers. They, you know, wizardry docs and gerbil feed bomb and, and then how to do this and that. And a lot of the files have that really kind of, hey there, how to, um, you know, basically like a lot of really funny files. In fact, one of their files is one of my top 100 text files. The CDC number 200 what is it? The CDC number two, higgedly piggedly, big fat hanacious, mega maca delicious, you can't even come close to jump back, K okay, boom 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 file. <laughs> Great file. You read this thing, if you came from that period and they break references to A lines and BBSs, and that's actually where the legend of Demon Seed seems to have come from, the glorious, massive monster truck that will destroy you. Rumored to be somebody who was so elite he became one with the network. <laughs> and people who are laners will die and have monster truck tracks across them and nobody will know why. <laughs> it's great stuff. I mean, there's this whole mythology that these guys build into their files. There's other groups I have. Um, what's really funny is when you have a text file writing group that goes on for about 15 years, um, there's a group called UXU, they're in Sweden. Yeah. I found that they have like 700 files. Yeah, I never heard of them. Boom, I got 700 files. File like number 600 is like, I'm in my apartment, and there's this family that's moved in upstairs, and oh my god, they're so loud. And I don't want to leave the apartment because it's a good rent. 
and it's really sucky. I don't know what to do. They scream all the time. I don't know what's up with the kids. That's the file. <laughs> they pushed that one out. That was their new release that week. <laughs> like, wow, you are old. You are so old. Um, yeah, so anyway, so, um, the, you know, uh, in terms of textfiles.com, is a, oh, and, um, in terms of a couple of files um, that I had here, I have one called Variable Pitch Frequency Generator, or How to Annoy Your Teachers, written by Captain Quig. Um, I actually built this. Actually, I hired a kid to build it. I had no idea how to do this. I hired it, and it worked. It worked. Um, I don't recommend but one thing, actually. I'm, there's a lot of bomb information on my site, and I, it's always been a big issue for me, because, you know, I've had, I've had people write to me, you will cause people to die. <laughs> You will be responsible for their deaths. I want you just to know that when you go to bed at night. <laughs> and I actually got that guy, actually, that one guy, I got him to, oh, 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 by the way, you get some of the most amazing email when you run a site like that. Dude, your files are so old. Get some new info. <laughs> Thank you. Some people write me text files. They send, one, one guy sent me mail, one paragraph, one paragraph. <laughs> Dude. So I got a text file for you. You can imagine me meeting this guy at a con or something coming up and dude, I got a text file for you. You get a, he's had to get a free haircut. You go into you go into a hair salon and you sit down and they, they, they cut your hair. So when she finishes, get up and walk out. Cause she's gonna be some small chick, she can't stop you. So can you put this up? Thanks. I think glorious, glorious people just, you know, they're touched by it. And also, I just wanted to mention one, one very special text file. Um, it's a posting, um, if you answer a trivia question correctly, you could post and everyone would see the post that day. Like, wow, I answered the trivia question correctly and now I have all the time in the world to post. I will do whatever I want. I haven't posted in a long time here except for this insult that I put in a user bulletin that originally went to the setup of Metronet. But the main reason I haven't posted is because I don't have much to say most of the time. Gotta fix that. I want you all to know I have buffer messages and will edit them and send them as gfiles later. Ha 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 ha. I have fucked with the BOCI system before. I reprogrammed the GIS program my school's password to say fuck you and you ran into it. Must have scared some student shitless. I have all been so I have also been tapping into phone lines, spelled F O N E. Um with my trusty testing phone that I ripped off a Ma Bell repair van. I break into conversations and say, this is AT&T, you are no longer a preferred customer, so you are going to cut off service, motherfucker. Scared them shitless too. <laughs> Need a Visa or MasterCard number to buy a new computer. Will trade. Send email. This is me. I wrote this when I was 13 years old. Thank you. You know, I'm mentioning this because there's a lot of kids you run into now, the so-called script kiddies, where's pups, I see a lot of terms like that, and where people are just going like, oh god, he's young, shit can. And uh, the problem is, is a lot of these people are just us younger, and when you're young, you need juice, you need, you need the Mac, you need to be able to go to your friends and go, look, I can do this, I'm with you, I'm cool as you, I can make this happen. And that makes a lot of people say very stupid things in public places. Because they want to let everyone know, I mean, you know, basically that thing is a big cry for help going, everyone love me on this BBS, please, because I damage things. I could be your friend, need credit card. It used to be people would post credit cards on BBSs, what's up with that? Thank you. Um, and the point is, I'm just saying, people get better. They do, they heal, they learn. They learn that you don't always have to claim you took down the internet for people to pay attention to you. And so, um, at DEF CON, I didn't really, you know, I didn't get a chance to cross-pollinate with a lot of people. I mostly stayed with my friends, because hey, I haven't seen these people in years, but a couple times I tried to talk to people, and it was like, <laughs> and I tried, but I'm, I'm really trying to willing to, and I'll definitely be here next year, and I hope more of that happens if I can. I, I don't know if DEF CON could really make some sort of a, um, um, uh, set up for that, really, if they could make up some sort of a way for people to just go, hey, hi, hi I know I'm 40 years old and you're two, but <laughs> we both really love computers, and that's really cool, and, you know, fine, you want to blow shit up, and I'm working for some ISP, but I, you know, I understand where you're coming from. I hope there's more of that. Um, there's probably some of it going on, but, ugh. Um, anyway, so, uh, um, 
let's see. You know, we're wondering about other subcultures. There's a subcult you know the subculture? There's people, a lot of people say, one of the themes I get from people who are my age is basically, man, things have really gone downhill. Those were the golden days. We had everything. Things were great. And the fact is, is believe it or not, I don't believe that. I think things are better than they ever were. Um, um, there was actually, was, I think, Douglas Rushkoff, and they said, when was the best time to live? And he said, right now, tomorrow if possible. Um, because right now, I have my top 100 text files, a Wired article about me, and the entire content of the speech on this floppy disk. And that rules. That's absolutely great. Um, I actually have a hundred of these, and I'm just gonna, you know, give them to people. Yeah, exactly. Here and not yet. That'll be crazy. It looks like a, looks like a cattle auction. Um, but, but you know, basically, it's that thing. You can you can sit there and and give somebody. Um, it took me like four years to get a good collection of 3,000 text files. And even today, there is somebody downloading 3,000 text files in about two minutes over like a T3 line. Just suck. And that's it. Hundreds of hours of the work of all these people. Boom. It's on some zip disk. He doesn't even notice it. You know? His, 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 his wind pad, his uh, word pad program is bigger than it. And it's, you know, he's got it. He's, he's happy. So, you know, for me, technology is just getting better and better, better transport mediums. I was so afraid that all this text files from the 80s and the 60s now, I got 70s text files, 80s text files, a bunch of 90s text files. I have an entire alt drug section, which I'm not too pleased about, but it was in some things, so. I figured they thought they were in the 80s, so. Um, but, but uh, you know, people are logging on, boom, you know. And now you've got it somewhere. And so stuff that was in the danger of disappearing, it's not going to disappear now. I did my part. I was, the, I was the schmuck who said, okay, look, everyone here, it's back again, take it, take it. And it's digital, right? So put it everywhere. And I love that. I just give it away free. I, I <laughs> there are places that give out text files, but it's usually porn ad, porn ad, porn ad, box file. Porn ad, porn ad. Click on the porn ad, look on the third page. There'll be something luscious blank. Type that in and maybe you can get another box file. The urine box plans. <laughs> Hey, your inbox plans. What a load of crap. Um, I know the author, but I'm not going to reveal who the author is, I don't think. Um, <laughs> hint. I mentioned him previously in this speech. <laughs> and, um, but people download it like it's real. You can't build it. It's supposed to kill the person on the other line. <laughs> people don't read it. It says, you know, you can make the other guy melt. And there was another one called the Blotto Box, run by Blotto. Oh, wow, everyone knows what the Blotto Box is. That's great. The Blotto Box was one of the only boxes that required a Honda generator. You were supposed to hook the Honda generator up to the central office and run like a motherfucker as fast as you could away from the large globe of fire that was behind you. What a great image. Great image, but it was just because Blotto, people would joke on Blotto Land about um, King Blotto. Um, oh, hell, King Blotto. Weird ass guy. Um, it, people would go, oh, there's a blotto box. Oh, we're going to blotto box him. Oh, let's get the blotto. Big joke. And someone said eventually, where's the blotto box? I'm at the blotto box. And, uh, you know, someone wrote the file, which was essentially, yeah, it destroys an entire, you know, local exchange. So, what, the area code? Oh, it's more potent than I thought. You could take out Utah. Generator. That's just hysterical. Southeast. What? And some feds took it seriously. I read an article about them actually taking it seriously and charging them. Uh, so they took that some guys over and they charged them with information on how to destroy an area code. Right. <laughs> I mean, well, the thing is, a lot of times, you know. Not as much now, but a lot of times back then, the federal agents and the Secret Service, they always came off like, uh, they always came off like mice and amphetamines about these things. You know? It was always like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. This Apple II, they pirated your eyes. You know, you got a lot of that. You were just like, oh my god, we gotta find out. Conspiracy theory, whatever. You know, 14, three year, you know, 14, 14, 14 year old kids, like four or five of them, one of them's got the Apple II with the 80 column card, so he's the elite one. They all go around him. And yeah, these kids are gonna, you know, I mean, I agree, yes, they'll change the world, but probably right not then. Maybe a little later, you know. That's the other thing that's kind of funny. All these kids, all these 14-year-olds at the time, skate the skinhead, and so on. Now they run ISPs. 
<laughs> and they're like, you know, yes, I control the internet for my local area. Dude, K-Cool Dudes! Oh, yeah! Supposedly, K-Buy was a, was a um, construction of uh, OK-Buy. You know, K-Buy. And it became K-Cool, K-Rad. And I think that still shows up now. Uh, that's the thing. There's no. That's part of why did, there's, like, there's actually a concern on my part about no sense of history. You know, this whole zeros for O's, this whole L's become ones, uh, four becomes A. These hack bulletin board systems. These kids are like, yeah, I'm being really cutting edge. And I'm thinking, 83, I had that. The kid was saying, yo, dudes, I've got you know, bolo, <laughs> bolo. Roboboomed. I've got, yeah, Roboboom ruled. Roboboom ruled. Sierra Line was pretty cool. Roberta Williams, if everyone knows she looks like, she's on the cover of the Soft Porn Adventure. She's the one on the right in the hot tub. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah, good references. I see everyone's with me there. Um, oh, one other file that's worth noting I didn't put in here. Sex with Satan by Psycho. It was actually so popular that CDC just took it. Because it was, it was great. Um, this file, this, this is like one of these classic files that, you know, I'm... I'm here, and there's senators here, and they go, why are you distributing this? <laughs> and I'm like, historical perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Two lines. No, three lines. She tied me to the bed with these handcuffs she had ripped off a fucking cop. She proceeded to spank me and kept calling me bad boy. Then the little info took out a lighter and set my cock on fire and told me not to smoke. <laughs> Oh, those were times of majesty. Where have they gone? Um, this, I believe this is the file that caused Geraldo Rivera to call um, CDC a bunch of sick bad... They didn't even... They, 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 were just, they were a distributing house at that point. You know, distributing it along. Um, what? Are you calling me a bad name? You are calling me a bad... I'm sorry. Okay. Well, no. See, the thing is... I have nothing but extreme respect for this. Like, I respect what the... Because it's very funny. It's a very funny sick file. It's a wonderfully funny sick file, and it's really entertaining to read. But it's one of those things where decontextually, I have a lot of problems with... There's, um, you know, like I think I mentioned before, I won't censor. I'm really not into that. I don't want to take away your right... Yeah, well, yeah. But, I mean, it sounds very hokey and crusty and constitutionality, and, but basically it's because I don't want to be the guy who says, no, you're not ready for this. It's not, you know, it's not my place. I'm trying to be like, hey, this is what I think it was about. And a lot of kids, I'll, sure, they log on, they go, they want the newest infos, they download 1982 files, and they take them home, try the blue box. Um, <laughs> I can just build it. I got all the plans. I can build it. Knock, knock. What? Yeah. Blowing 2,600 down there. It's not working. Not working. But um. Yeah. No. Um. But the uh the 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 the, the um. Oh, what was that? The. Mm -hmm. Oh, anyway. Um. No. So. So. I just can't see myself in that position, um, and it's caused me a bit of problems. There's a file on there called The Jew File by a gentleman named The Jolly Roger. And I'm ashamed of the file. I really hate it. I, 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 don't, I don't like this file. It's a really abhorrent thing. Um, he's just, it's just a big old racist rant. And, um, it, you know, it's just, it's just like, ugh, it's, it's horrifying. But I put it up, I call it a racist rant, and hope for the best. And I hope someone doesn't go to and go, you're a white supreme. You know, they start thinking, I believe in everything on the site. I'm not. I'm a librarian. I'm essentially a librarian. So, um, so just one other, one other point I wanted to make. I, I'm, I'm pretty much wrapping up here. I'll take questions quickly and, you know, that kind of stuff, which I'm sure. Why are you still up there? Um, but I just want to mention, because I actually have some of the crowd here, um, being somebody who's seen things historically, there's a thing I call the hammer. And the hammer is basically this force, the, the forces, because when I'm working with these files now, I see them again. I see files about people talking about bad things that happened to them. And there's a thing called the hammer, and I'm not demonizing anything here, but to me the hammer is when um, um, the press often, or mass media or stuff say, there's something really bad going on here. And that's when, you know, 
you, the shadow of the hammer is over you, and then the hammer lifts when um, the public says there's something that has to be done. We've heard there's these horrifying things happen. And then the hammer comes down basically when the forces in control, the you know, government and other police forces and will do citizens just go, oh, we've got to eradicate. Bang, bang, bang. And they're just going down and you've got kids who are like, what? And they're just being busted and raided or they're being told something or they're being fired because they had something to do with it or something. And this happens, this has happened, you know, it's happening now with the web page busts, but it was happening in 92 and it was happening in 85 and it was happening before that and way back when, when they were seizing calculators because they were possible phone hacking boxes and then parading them out and putting them out on tables and going, look, look at these tools he's used to, to destroy everything. And I just um, was just responding basically to, to say, you know, like that makes me, me nervous and I just wanted to say just to the group of, of DEF CON to, to um, realize that we have a very precious thing here. We have a bunch of people who really care about technology and not just tech. Some of us look at it as a gun and some of us look at it as a lifting force and some of us really care. And I think even the guys who, the, 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 the environmental control idiots, in, in their hearts, they love the environmental controls. They're just a very abusive relationship. <laughs> but, you know, these, they'll, they'll get better. They got better. I'll get better, I hope. Um, and I just want, you know, basically I'm just saying if you see people and you see they're more like you, not to be turning on them and going, you suck because I've got six of this and you've got five of that. I paid 600 for the new thing and you've only got the old $200 thing. Because there's a lot of that, and, and that's, I don't know, just to me, that you can do better than that. Anyway, so having said that little piece, um, I'll take any questions if somebody goes, any? Yes? You talk about uh, subculture. So I'm going to get into like, the, uh, the where's uh, subculture, like 87. Um, I do have a .nfo section. Basically, .nfo files were parts of the pirate zip files. Um, a, a gentleman named Toast from Canada gave me most of them, like 2,000. Basically, it's call our place, here's what we're working on, we cracked this, it's whatever from Micropost. I have those. I have files about how to crack, which don't apply much anymore, but I mean, you know, that kind of stuff. Like I said, I got the Crackwitz files back from 84, um, 85. Um, you know, that, 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 once again, for me, it's always, it's always about the text. It's never about the wares. It's about what were people like around the wares? Why did they use the wares? So I have a lot of that. I have a lot of, in, you know, basically, so yes, I do have stuff. And it, it's... Do you get into the VPS lock file or anything like that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mentioned that before. Yeah, basically, I, I will accept... BBS logs, message logs, stuff like that. Um, hopefully the Phoenix Project is send, you know, um, Eric Ludax is supposed to send me a bunch of stuff, which I'll put up, you know. And like I said, don't charge. Yes, sir? Oh, who wants my URL? www.textfiles.com. Oh, come on. With an F. Don't worry, textfiles.ph will be registered very soon after this talk, I guarantee. Probably make fun of me. Probably by some porn site. That's right, porn site. The White House guy will find me. Yeah! More hits for me in my porn. Um, I also own textfiles.org. It was a very, I got textfiles.org because it wasn't taken, and then the company that owns textfiles.com just gave it up. I said, thank you. Grabbed it, and that's it. Somebody owns textfiles.net. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, I, I, um, I also own cow.net if anyone actually feels like browsing it. I don't know. Anyway. Um, any other questions? Hmm? Me. One, th I, I, one of the things I'm really into is I like taking pictures of really, really beat up arcade games. You know these arcade games that they converted? You get like Ms. Pac-Man and boom, it's Galaga. Boom, it's this. Boom, it's Terminator 2. Boom, it's whatever. And then poor, poor boxes are just beat this shit. And like people just like stick there. I got one box. I mean, it looks like someone took a flamethrower to it. It must have been in the most amazing bar with the most amazing chain smoker. Just like, oh God, oh God. I mean, it's burnt. Somebody took a um, Return of the Jedi arcade game and turned it into a Lucky 7 poker game with like 25 buttons. It was a Mahjong game. I just love, like, I like that weird stuff. Just that weird people. I also own a checker, a 1978 checker marathon taxi cab. That's what I drive around in. And um, so I go into that too. Fine. That's more about, too much about me. Anybody else? Mm. Uh, 
a sea of completed happy faces. Oh, one more. Yes, Lady Ada. You know, if you'd wandered in at the beginning of the conversation, but um, no, I uh, basically I'll go into that very quickly. Once again, I, it, it's not my area in terms of like I have ASCII files. If people have converted things from other formats to ASCII files, like Epic to ASCII, I have ANSI files. I don't know quite what to do with them. I just have them. I like. There's another site, and unfortunately, I don't have the link. I have a number of sites who I really respect. Sites who have really comprehensive, cool things. There's an ANSI group who just kick ass. They wrote a CGI program that converts ASCII into GIFs. So you can just look at them. Don't need anything. Just look at them. And there's another guy. You've caught a Fed. You've talked to the wrong guy about it. You, you've caught a fed. I want my fucking t-shirt! <laughs> Sir, is he of a legal size limit or do you have to throw him back? That's a thousand dollar fine, you know. A thousand dollar fine and they seize all your gear. Oh, and it's five years in jail, too. Fishing game really frowns on that if it's an undersized fed. Oh, you're the one who wanted to fuck my feet, aren't you? Just, if you don't want it, give it to somebody who cares. They did pay for them. Behind the camera. Let me just throw it. Where's the Fed? This, the, you're the Fed? You're not the Fed. You're the Fed. From the main conference room. What? They handle the IPv6 stuff if they're there. Thank you. The gentleman, by the way, I need to make a general announcement. The gentleman in the yellow. Hi, Ming. Good to see you. Why don't you turn around? Turn around. Start walking towards that door and find out if that's. Okay, then just hang loose. We're doing some staff stuff over the radio so you guys could enjoy it too. So you can understand the sheer chaos I have to put up with while I'm up here. The, the, the gentleman in the yellow hard hat. Would you, would you mind stepping up, please? Come on, come on and tell us who you are. He's the director, NSA, technical service. No. Come on up, it's okay, we won't bite you. You, you just hang those two, we'll be right with you. Someone uh, catheter uh, and to make sure uh, they, they actually drip uh, through the carotid, please. T tell us who you are. I, I promise you some, uh, some, some, some uh, publicity here. Thanks, Priest, for putting me on the spot. No worries. Um, I'm uh, writing stuff for Linux World, and um, basically I wanted to find out how security on Linux is improving or getting worse. And, uh, hmm? Pass. Thank you, oh, sir. That's it. <laughs> you, you scared him off. Good job. Basically, if anyone would like to opine on that subject, who actually is a credible source, Please make sure that you see him. I would really appreciate it. If you're not a credible source and you waste his time, we have a bag of doorknobs that we're